Hello and welcome to McCray's Key. In this video we are going to be working with Blender and getting it set up for initial use. As well we're going to be working with a, uh, a model from a specific source. There are multiple places where you can get STL or stereolithography figures, digital downloads, uh, and we will be working with one in particular tonight, getting Blender set up getting the model imported and ready for painting. That source is Eldritch Foundry. You can find them on the web at eldritch-foundry.com. Uh, the reason we're focusing on Eldritch Foundry models is that they have some unique properties amongst all the other sources of 3D models that you can find, especially in figures. And when it comes to painting these uh, specific properties, make painting much quicker and much easier. That doesn't mean you can't get figures from other sources, such as My Mini Factory or independent sources. There's a lot of people out there producing models. Or Hero Forge. All those figures are great. Uh, they all come in STL format and, can, and the same process can be used here. But when we get to kind of the unique properties that make Eldritch Foundry figures a little more friendly for the digital painting, uh, in preparation for import into McCray's Keep. Uh, we'll highlight those and we'll, we'll give you a demonstration on what the differences are and let you uh, make the judgment on uh, how big a deal that is. But uh, for someone who processes and paints uh, quite a number of figures, I can tell you that the time savings and the effort savings are really worth it. And unless you can't get a certain figure from them um, or a certain option, I would highly recommend going there. Also, their prices uh, certainly are a little less than any of the other um, commercial outlets. So let's start by uh, just setting up Blender uh, for the first time use for those of you who haven't used it before. If you download Blender, and uh, uh, you can find that, uh, just Google Blender, and you'll be able to download it. It's a free download. Um, you'll find that when you open it up, you will have a scene that looks very much like this. The default scene in Blender has three uh, elements to it, and you can see that in the list right up here in your scene collection. There's a camera, which is right here. There's a light, which is over here. And they put a cube in here for you. Uh, we're not going to use any of this stuff. So what I would recommend doing, again, this is all in preparation for processing and painting uh, STL figures. Uh, I would uh, uh, set this up this way. First of all, we're going to delete each of these. So you can just highlight them. Uh, you can either right click and delete them, or you can highlight them and hit the delete key, whatever you like to do. Okay, so that gives us a nice, clean uh, 3D viewport here. The other thing that I do too is because we're not using animation uh, down in this lower pane here. Uh, is the animation um, timeline. Uh, what I like to do, because sometimes you can click in there and do strange things and get the animation going, uh, I like to actually just take this and put the information uh, um, utility in there. And this just gives you a little bit of information about what's going on uh, and what you're doing when you click on things and you do that. Sometimes I'll even go so far as to just drag this down just because uh, really you don't need that. And uh, for me personally, I like to have as much space uh, in my 3D viewport to work as possible. The next thing I would do, and this is really important, because you don't want to have to do those steps every time you come into Blender. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete this too. What I do is I come to File, and you can go to Defaults here, and you can do Save Startup File. And so now every time you start Blender, this is how it's going to look for you. And you don't have to do those steps every time. So that's the basics of getting Blender set up and ready for use. Uh, we'll go through some of the controls as we get our figure in here and as we start to do uh, the pre-processing and then the actual painting of the figure. So this video kind of assumes that you have a figure, whether you've uh, already got it or you go to Eldritch Foundry and dial it up. When you, uh, when you purchase a figure from Eldritch Foundry, you can download it, and it comes in a zip file. We're going to uh, extract that zip file here. 
I've got uh, I've got an Eldritch Foundry folder in my downloads folder, and they send you three uh, different STL files. One is the character itself. One is the base or the stage uh, of the character, the little round uh, base that the figure sits on, and then this is the one we're interested in. Uh, it's uh, it's a combination of the two of them, and uh, we're going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, and you can put this anywhere on your uh, on your machine that you want. I have a dedicated place for this, but it doesn't really matter uh, where this goes. You do have to unzip it, and I'm just copying it out of the zip. Uh, and then uh, I have an STL folder here. Ooh, lots of STL files. I'm going to paste that in here, and then I'm going to rename this. And this, again, what you rename it to is kind of uh, dependent upon what the figure is. In this case, I have uh, Damaran Militia, and I'm going to put a dash 01 on here because I plan on having multiple versions of this figure. Basically, this is a soldier uh, from the country of Damara, which, for those of you who are familiar with Forgotten Realms, is a country in the Forgotten Realms. Uh, I just uh, chose this figure. It was the next one kind of on my list that I wanted to, to paint, and so it got drafted into duty uh, in this video. So right now, um, I'm going to close this. So how do we get that STL file into Blender? Well, the first thing we do is we go to the File menu and the Import menu. And you can find right here is the STL. Again, STL files are, it stands for stereolithography, which is the technical term for 3D printing. Uh, when you purchase uh, files um, from uh, Eldritch Foundry or Hero Forge or download them from a number of sources on the internet, uh, they're most likely going to come as an STL file. Now, if you get figures that are in other formats, that's fine. If you can import them or get them in native Blender format, that's great. Uh, but uh, as this video is focusing on uh, the process from Eldritch Foundry, uh, we're going to go uh, and assume that it's an STL file because that's what you get from them. And now I'm going to go through, uh, I have some uh, recent uh, folders here. You can just go and find the folder using the normal uh, uh, Windows navigation here. Uh, however, you get to the folder where you uh, put your uh, new STL file. Uh, that's up to you. And here's our Damar and Militia. And all you have to do is uh, these options over here. You can just leave these, uh, just leave these the way they are. Um, none of the, none of these things are anything we need to change. You can just click Import STL, and that's going to take just a minute. Hey, and there he is. Obviously, very big. So. The first thing we're going to do is get familiar with some of the navigation um, in the 3D viewport here of Blender. And obviously the first thing we need to do is zoom. You, the best way to zoom is to just use your mouse wheel. Mouse wheel down or rolling it towards you, it zooms out. And, and the opposite is true, roll it forward to zoom in. Now when you want to move around uh, you move your viewpoint around within the 3D uh, window here. You can just uh, click your center mouse button, and for most people, the center mouse button is represented by the mouse wheel. Your mouse wheel probably clicks. If you if you doesn't, or you have a, a different kind of mouse, or, or not a three button mouse, uh, um, this video uh, probably isn't going to help you right there. You'll have to uh, figure out exactly how to get to your middle button. Um, but clicking your middle button and holding it and then moving the mouse around will rotate your viewpoint around the figure. Now, if you don't want to rotate, if you want to pan by moving in the cardinal directions, you hold the shift key down while doing the same thing, clicking and holding the middle mouse button. And now we're not rotating, but we're panning. These are the two movements that are the three, zoom, pan, and rotate, that you're going to use most often when painting your figure. We'll get into more of that as we go through here, and I'll reiterate those things as we go. But first things first, uh, we want to make sure that we get this uh, ready for painting, uh, first of all. So the first thing that we're going to do is, now that we have our STL file into Blender, we're going to save it off as a .blend file or a native Blender file. So you just click Save. 
And then I have a dedicated folder here. So this is going to be Damaran Militia Initial 1. I keep my naming conventions the same, depend, uh, no matter what the, the type of file. We were working with a .stl file before. Now we're working with a .blend file here. And then we just save the Blender file. Okay, so now as we go, all we have to do is uh, go File, Save, or Control S to save our work as we go. So, uh, the next thing that we're going to do and we're going to talk about is a real important difference here. The two modes that we're going to have our viewpoint be in. Right now we're in object mode. And um, object mode uh, has to do with large chunks uh, of, the, uh, of the model in question. And that you can see is uh, uh, represented up here. We just have one chunk. It's just uh, just the figure itself. The other mode that we're going to be in uh, quite a bit is edit mode. I'm going to switch there now, and it's going to do something crazy. Uh, the whole model is selected, um, and uh, not only is it selected, it's selected by vertices. Uh, vertices are the little dots that you see uh, at the intersection of each edge. Uh, and face. So the three kind of important things to know about a 3D mesh like this, uh, it looks like a mesh. We have vertices are the dots at each intersection. The lines are called edges and then the space between edges are called faces. That's represented up here and this is really important. Whenever you bring an STL model in for the first time you're going to have to change this and we work with faces here. So this is vertices or vertex, this is edge or edges, and this is faces, we're gonna to switch to this. You can see our display changed slightly. It's not highlighting the vertices anymore. And you can see everything is orange here. That's the highlight color. Uh, and for right now, we're just going to go select and we're gonna go none. All right, so now we're in edit mode. You can see You can see our model, we can move around again, rotate. I'm holding down the center mouse button and just moving my mouse back and forth, up and down. And then if I hold shift, then I can move up and down, side to side. And I'm gonna go over these controls all throughout uh, the video here. Um, and uh, again, zoom in and out, and I'm just using my mouse wheel for that. You can also, I believe, if you hold control, and then hold your middle mouse button that also zooms. I find just scrolling the mouse wheel is much more intuitive for zooming in and out. So the next thing that we're going to do here is we have to uh, set uh, what's called a base color. Uh, right now this is, you can see it's kind of a light gray, um, but that is not really a color as far as materials go. So uh, we're going to change that uh, and this is uh, the area uh, in the properties area here where we're going to spend the most, most of our time. And this is the materials property. Materials represent the various colors or paint that we're going to be using. If we go in here, um, I'm just going to resize this a little bit because we don't, we're not going to have a long list up here. So we don't need this space. And then this I'm going to pull down right here because this is where all everything that we paint, every piece of the model, that we segregate into its own area and we want to have a specific color for it is going to be listed in here and you'll see how this list grows. Right now we have nothing and we need to have something. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by the first thing you do whenever you want to add a color to your model, you want to paint something, uh, you go here and you have to add a material slot. You click the plus key and now we have a blank slot. Okay. It comes with a default material, and we're gonna, and that can be found here just by dropping this. All the materials that you add can be found in this dropdown. We'll get more into that in a second. But they give you a default one. We don't use this one, but we're going to grab it here, and we're going to overwrite it because otherwise it just sits out there and doesn't get used. So I always call this first one the base color, and this is going to be. Think of this as a primer color. We're going to prime our, if, if you think of a, a physical figure, if you've done any, um, any painting of physical figures, a lot of times what you'll do is you'll give it a base coat or a primer. Uh, and that's basically what we're doing here. Hit enter. Now, 
The next thing is very important with regard to uh, getting our figure into McCree's Keep. There's a couple of technical differences uh, that we need to be aware of and make sure we do for every material or every color we use. And that's this uh, blue bar right here that says use nodes. So this, what this does is if we click on this, then we're going to use shader nodes to render the material. Now, you can do some research if you really want to get into the nitty-gritty and what a shader node is and, and, what, and how that affects rendering. But for right now, we're going to click that, uh, and then we're just going to use nodes. If you like to simplify this up a little bit, you can actually click the settings area and collapse that because we don't really need that. All we're going to be interested in is these four things right here, our base color, uh, the metallic we're never going to touch because it doesn't translate uh, out of Blender when we export, and we'll get there later. The specular and the roughness. Specular is how shiny it is, and for reasons that I'll explain as we go forward, we never want it to be shiny. It makes it difficult to see when we're painting. And uh, similarly, we want everything to be 100 or all the way rough, which is a, a value of 1 here. So whenever you're adding a color, these are the first two things you're going to do. You're going to remove all the specularity and you're going to add roughness. Um, and that's, uh, that's the steps you go. And then finally, we're going to choose the color. What I do for my primer or my base color is I like to have a dark gray. And we'll, we'll get into various uses of this color selector. There's a bunch of options in here. Uh, some can be more useful than others. But for right now, we don't need any color. I like to have a nice dark gray and I'll explain why in a second. When we're doing things, we're selecting things to paint. Uh, uh, it shows up very nice in a very nice contrast um, with a dark gray base coat. Uh, and as you see, when I when I was moving the uh, slider here, it's actually changing the color in real time. So we can kind of just kind of guess. It's not really super important uh, where you go here. And and as you paint more figures, you may. Um, find uh, preferences that, that work better for you, and that's, uh, that's totally okay. So I'm going to save this right here. Again, I like to save my work as I go. Uh, it's just uh, better uh, um, than losing anything if your machine crashes or the power goes out or anything like that. Um, I've had really good luck with Blender as far as uh, crashing. It seems very stable, um, but again, uh, better safe than sorry. Now, I'm going to go through some basic prep here of the model before we start painting. These things are um, largely optional. Um, I am very like to be very consistent because I do a lot of these figures, so I like them all to kind of be structured the same and work the same, and, and a lot of the basic things I like to be the same. Um, and so the first thing that we're going to do is each of these figures has uh, a serial number on the bottom, and when I bring these in and use them in McCray's Keep, I take this base and I make it semi-transparent. Um, you may not do that, so this step may not matter, but I'm going to go through it anyway just in case it does. Um, so what I do uh, is I'm going to get rid of this serial number. So when you're looking at this figure and this stage is semi-transparent, you don't see that number shining through there. Um, so. Uh, another way to, um, as long as we're talking about this, another way to uh, navigate your viewpoint uh, around the scene is by using um, number pad keys. And so if you want to use the number one, it's going to give you a, a straight on view and you can see it change from an isometric to a, a squared off view there. If you go to three uh, on your number pad, it's going to look from the side. If you go from seven, it looks from the top. Now you can do um, control in each of those numbers uh, to do the opposite. So if I do control seven, now I'm looking at the bottom. Control one, I'm looking at the back. Control three, I'm looking at it from the other side. So here I'm gonna do control seven because I wanna look at the bottom. And I'm gonna zoom in and then again, pan a little bit. This is shift, middle button, drag. And I'm gonna zoom in some more and I'll explain why in a second. So everything that we do here, whether we're um, modifying the model, the mesh, if you will, or if we're painting, uh, really comes down to kind of a two-step process. First things first, you want to select um, the part of the model that you're going to be working on. And then once it's selected, 
then you're going to either paint it or do the other modification. In this case, I'm going to be deleting things. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into select mode. Select mode, again, when it comes to painting, is going to be uh, extremely important. Uh, there are a couple of different ways to select things. Uh, the most common, probably, is uh, to do the circle selector. And to uh, get your circle selector going, uh, you do the letter C on your keyboard. And you can see now I've got a nice uh, circle selector. And if I click on anything, uh, because again, we're in faces mode up here. Remember, we switched that. Any face that I click on, I'm going to select. So if I click there, I select that face. If I click here, I select that and that. And you can just click everything you want. Now, in this case, I don't want to select those faces, that bottom of the stage. I want to be selecting uh, this number. So I'm going to deselect these things. And again, deselecting is very important because it's uh, uh, just basically a way to undo or to, if you, if you click on something you don't mean to, you can control Z to undo. That's a standard Windows uh, undo. Uh, or you can, instead of using your standard left button click to select like I have been doing, you can then click your middle button or your mouse wheel button to unselect. Also, you can see that if I wanted to select one of these numbers, the problem is that my circle is so big, and I'm going to get part of the number, but I'm also going to get what I call overspray, and I'm going to select this behind it. Now I could just deselect this, and I've got what I want. But that's not really very good. Um, and, and you'll see uh, you want very, sometimes you want very precise uh, control over what you're selecting. Uh, because we're in select mode now, your mouse wheel does something different. Instead of zooming you in and out, it makes your selector, your select circle, bigger or smaller. And there are many reasons when it's, uh, many times when it's handy to have a big selector. Uh, right now, we're just going to have a little one. I just want to get a, a face or two on each of these numbers. Okay. To get out of select mode, you can either um, hit escape or you can just click your right mouse button. And that's what I usually do. So C to get into select mode right click to get out of select mode. It's a very common um, uh, combination of keys because if you're selecting something, you're in select mode and you're doing, okay, I'm going I'm to grab this, I'm going to grab this. And then you realize you want to move around. You can't, your, your movement keys or your movement uh, uh, controls are basically disabled because I'm in select mode. Remember, if we're not in select mode, our mouse wheel zooms our viewport low when we're in select mode. Um, you know, the mouse wheel makes your selector bigger or smaller. So you have to get out of select mode and then you can move around or zoom in and out if you want to. And then get back into select mode when you're ready to do more selecting. But I've selected everything uh, manually that I need to and we're going to go into uh, one of the coolest uh, features uh, with regard to painting uh, even though we're not strictly painting at the moment. And this is uh, one of the unique uh, features of the Eldridge Foundry um, figures. And I'll highlight this again later when we actually start painting. Um, but uh, each part of an Eldridge Foundry figure is its own, its own part of the mesh. In other words, it's, this figure is not one big mesh where if I... Um, or I can't select individually individual things, and I'll show you what I mean here by that. It's kind of hard to explain without an example. So the uh, one of the once you have some things selected, you can do a key combination, Control L, which is select linked faces. Uh, and if you go up to the select menu, you can see that here, select linked. And what we want to do is select linked. And that's the shortcut key is Control L. We can either click here or do Control L. And what that's going to do is it's going to select any face or any part of the model that is physically linked to what you've already selected. Now, with any other model that I've run into, whether it's Hero Forge or My Mini Factory or a number of sources of independent models, the, the models are one mesh. So if you highlight, like I did, little chunks and then you select link, it literally selects the whole model. 
And while there's nothing intrinsically wrong with that, for what we're doing, um, <clears throat> this is extremely handy because if I wanted to paint these numbers now, I could do that. Right now I want to delete them, but it's much easier to do Control L and I'll show you what we would have to do otherwise if I do select none. We'd have to go in here and I would have to select each and every one of these like this. And then if I go too far, and I'll, oh, now I've got to deselect that, and then I've got to go, and then you, you could go and you'd zoom in and move around, and you've got to get each and every one of these. And believe me, uh, there are models where you're going to have to do this if you paint a lot of figures, and that's fine. But if you can avoid it, you're going to want to avoid it. And trust me, um, uh, this is super handy. So we're just going to click on uh, each number. And then we're going to do Control L. All of them are selected. So now I'm going to delete these faces. That's, I just hit the delete key uh, and then uh, select faces. And basically all that does is that deletes that part of the model. And that's all gone. Again, you don't have to delete the serial number if you don't want to. I just like to do it because, again, I make my stages semi-transparent. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to select and paint our stage. And this is kind of the, uh, the uh, iterative or the repeated process that you do for everything. So we're going to select part of the stage and we're gonna do Control L. You can see that selects only the upper part and that's fine. So we're just gonna click down on this lower part and then we're gonna do Control L again. Now we have the entire stage selected. Very simple, very easy. We didn't have to worry about getting in down to the nitty gritty. And I'll tell you, you have to do this if you get figures from Hero Forager or other sources. You got to get down and click around every edge of this manually. And while you can do it, and I've done it many times and I'll do it in the future when I have to, uh, Control L is much, much easier. So the first thing that we're going to do here is go to our painting. Uh, process again. And you saw part of this when we did our base color, but this is really uh, the iterative process. Select the area of the model that you want to paint a certain color. Add a material slot. Down here, instead of selecting one, because we've already used the one that's there, we're going to click this new bar, or the plus sign right here, to create a new material that we're going to put in this new material slot that we just created. And boom, now you see we've got this display like we did with our base color. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it the stage. And then again, very important that we click to use our shader nodes. Again, leave metallic alone. Specular down to nothing. Roughness up to one. And then we can pick our color. Uh, again, colors are uh, uh, completely arbitrary. You can paint things however you want. And once you do paint them here in Blender, when this figure is imported into McCray's Keep later on, anything that you paint here, you can change later on. Uh, very easy to do. I make all my stages uh, completely black. And uh, I'll do the transparency later once we, once we get into McCray's Keep. Um, but that will be uh, content probably for another video. The last step here that we didn't have to do with our base color because we didn't create the material, but you ha have to remember to do this. And again, we'll go over this little cycle of three or four steps here. Uh, each time we paint a chunk of the model is you just do a sign. You can see that that changed there. Now we can deselect that and you can see that our stage is now black. If we want to reselect the stage for any reason, we can just click select and now our entire stage uh, is selected. And that's it. That's as, that's as easy as it is to uh, paint something uh, in your figure in Blender. And we're going to do uh, one more thing here uh, before we kind of uh, take a, a slight detour. I'm going to deselect the stage. Now I want to paint his boots. We we'll just might as well start from the bottom and go all the way up. So what I do... Again, C for select mode. And I'm going to click a little on each of his boots. 
get out of select mode. Control L when we do our select link does not work if you're still in select mode. So if you're hitting Control L and nothing's happening, uh, right click your mouse to make sure you're out of select mode. <coughs> uh, now that we are, we're going to Control L. And you can see, bing, bang, boom, we just selected his entire boots without having to again go and select each one of these faces, not making sure to not get uh, any of this other stuff selected. Very, very easy. Paint, or selecting these boots, if this were uh, a, a, a figure from another source, not Eldritch Foundry, probably would have taken 20 or 30 minutes. It's just that tedious to get around each edge. you got to get on each edge on that side. Then you got to go in on this side, and you got to get all these, fill all this in. Then you've got another edge right here. you got another edge right here, and you get the drill. It's uh, very time-consuming, very tedious, um, and uh, if you can avoid it, like I said, you want to. So again, here we go. We've selected the part of the model we want to paint, step one. Add a new material slot, step two. Add a new material, step three. Name it. Boots. These are the upper of the boots, so I'm going to go boots upper as opposed to the sole or the straps or anything else. Then we're going to switch to shader nodes, get rid of the specularity, add the roughness, and here I'm going to make these a brownish leather. Let's see, how about that? And we're going to make that down until we get it brown. A little darker, there we go. And finally, assign. We deselect that. You can see we now have brown boots. I'm going to save this. One thing that I like to do, um, because when you're moving around and you get in and you start painting certain things, sometimes the stage kind of gets in the way. Um, uh, gets in the way of seeing things and gets in the way of doing things. Um, there is a really nice way to kind of get that temporarily while you're working out of the way. And the way we do that is I'm going to click the stage here and I'm going to click select to select the stage. Now we could also do this the way we did it before by going into select mode, selecting both parts, the upper and the lower layer there, and then getting out of select mode and doing control L. However you want to select it, that's up to you. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the a mesh menu and we're going to separate this part of the mesh by selection. So we're going to separate basically the stage from the rest of the figure. And uh, it looks a little bit different now. That's because only our figure is in edit mode. You can see that because you can see the mesh. Uh, the stage is now in object mode, but we don't really care about that because the one thing that we're going to do with this, and again, it just makes a copy of the name here, but we just want to use, click the little eyeball, eyeball here, and that's going to hide the stage. You can just toggle, it's just a toggle on and off. But now we don't have to worry about the stage, and you can see that there's some interesting features here that we're going to get to in a second. But um, it just sometimes makes it easier. Again, that's a personal preference. If you want to leave the stage there, you don't want to do the step, that's fine. It's really easy to join these back together later, and when we get there, we'll do that. But uh, we have some um, artifacts here in the model. These are um, uh, here for the 3D printing process uh, because we're not printing this model, at least not this version of the file. You still have the STL file that you downloaded. If you ever want to print that, that's fine. But for what we're doing here, we don't need um, these things here. So we're going to click a little here, click a little there, get out of select mode with a right click. We're going to do control L. And then uh, like we did with the serial number on the stage, we're just going to hit the delete key and we're going to delete faces. And boom, the, that stuff's gone. All right. So let's continue on with our boots. Um, we see we have a, a tongue here, it looks like. That's what I'm going to call it. 
So we're going to select this and select this. Uh, right click to get out of select mode. Control L to select link. And I think those are the tongue of the boot, but uh, who knows? But that's what we're going to call it. So we're going to do, we're going to get into our little uh, uh, cycle of things for painting, which is select the part of the model that we want to paint. We've done that. Create a new slot. Create a new material to go in that slot. Name the material. Boot. Tongue. Tongue is such a weird word to spell. I always spell it wrong. But uh, We're going to switch to shader nodes. We don't want a shiny tongue. We do want it to be rough. And then we're going to, again, choose a brown color. I like to choose slightly different colors, even though uh, maybe the tongue of the boot would be the same as the upper. Um, who knows? Um, but I like to keep things uh, a little varied. Uh, it just adds a little, it's an easy way to add a, a little, um, uh, just a little variety to the model uh, and, and the, makes the final product just look a little bit better. Uh, like uh, just like with a physical model, you wanna you wanna have some detail in there, um, and then uh, so it doesn't look like you just you know blot the paint on you know in, in one color. Um, so our boot straps, I don't know if these are meant to be metal. They kind of look metal. Well, we're going to first of all we're going to select them all. Let's not select these rivets because those are going to be different. And get out of select mode with the right click, control L, and boom. So we are going to call these, okay, new slot, new material, name it, boot straps, nodes. And here we're gonna we're gonna color these we're gonna paint these as metal. I don't know if they are, but for our guy they're gonna be. So we're just gonna make them kind of a dark, uh, medium mediumish gray, and we're gonna assign that. And we're gonna deselect. It doesn't look much different from the base color. And if you look up here, you can see that the base color is almost the same. If we want to go here, if you want to see a little more contrast. We can make our base color a little bit darker. Um, again, all these things are just uh, whatever helps you in your work process. So now we're going to do our rivets here. So again, go into select mode. And I and because we're selecting on a very small thing, I like to roll my mouse forward, mouse wheel forward, and get a teeny tiny little select space. So you can go click, 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 click very easily without clicking on to the straps. We've already painted those, so we don't need to. Get out of select mode. I'm going to rotate over here because we got more rivets over here. And when you have things that are going to be painted the same, that they're the same type of object, there's no reason not to just do them all at once. All right. So I'm going to control L on those, and our rivets are all selected. Very easy, very simple. Rivet is rivet IT or ET? I have no idea. And these, I think I'm just going to keep it simple and we're going to make these black. So um, I'm going to do a save here. Now, this is really the, um, the flow of painting. Again, you've seen it here several times now where we select what we want. We create a slot, we create material, we set the parameters and the color for our material, and we move on to the next one. Um, again, Control L is your friend. Uh, we're going to do one more like this. We're just going to grab his pants. I'm just selecting one face there. Control L. And now we selected uh, his entire pants. Select to create a new slot. We're going to create a new material. We're just going to call this 
pants, use shader nodes, set these two parameters, and here we're going to the main color of Damara and their crest is green. So obviously we don't want his pants. And if you accidentally go, oh my God, look at that. I've given him fluorescent <laughs> green pants. I don't want to do that. That's no problem. Um, very easy once you've selected something. Here, number one, in Blender it doesn't matter because once you import it into the Crayscape, you can, you can change any of these things that are listed here can be changed either to a new color or you can add an actual texture image to it and we'll get into that later on. Uh, you can do that later. So the point is don't agonize over exactly which colors you're painting here in Blender. Uh, number one, it's just not that important because it can be changed later. I like to get things approximately the way that I want them to look and a lot of times they're fine when I import them into McCraskeep. Uh, sometimes uh, some things come in a little darker, a little lighter than I want it, and I can make an adjustment then. In this case, though, this is a little ridiculous. I want dark green pants. Um, so once you have something like this assigned, even if you're doing other things, you just click on the material in question. You can go back here. You don't have to do any selecting or any of that. Just open your new color, and what I want to do is have a nice dark kind of forest green. And that's it. You don't even got to click assign. It's already been assigned. We're just changing the color. And that's all there is to that. Now, um, we are going to do one thing here that's going to be a little bit tedious. And I'm going to show you this because it's important to um, note the difference between Eldritch Foundry figures and uh, other sources of figures. In this case, uh, many of the boots in Eldritch Foundry uh, have independent soles uh, as opposed to the upper of the boot. Uh, in this case the boots are all one mesh and you can see that when we click on this and we select one we do control L it selects the upper and it selects the sole. Um, I don't like that. Um, I don't want the sole of the boot to be the same color as the upper. Um, again how much detail you want to go into on your figures it's completely up to you um, uh, and maybe f you, you don't care what color these are or maybe you, you make the, the upper of the boot black and then the sole is black too and it really doesn't matter but for us we've got leather boots and I would like to have a darker uh, or, 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 or black sole so that's what we're going to do here and this is how the reason I am doing this in this video is this is how when you get a figure from another source that's not Eldritch Foundry, um, this is how you have to paint everything. Or have to, I should say, how you have to select everything. And it gets, and as you'll see here in a minute, because this is going to probably take us, uh, you know, 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so to do what I'm about to do. It gets very tedious and very time consuming. So the first thing that we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to do a little bit of uh, some other select methods. It's another reason I want to show you uh, um, how to do this, is we're going to do some other select methods in addition to the circle selector that you've already seen and the selecting length. There are other things that we can do that are very handy. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to go into select mode and I'm going to, I'm going to just select a line right down the middle of the boot. Don't worry about this gray over here. I'll explain what that is in a minute, and we'll fix that up too. But for right now, I don't want to get too bogged down in that. But for right now, I just want to have a nice stripe basically right down the bottom of his boot. Uh, the no another technique, and the one we're going to look at right now for selecting, is selecting more or selecting less. Uh, and those keys are, um, if you go into the select menu, you can see that we have more or less here. If you want to select more, you do control and number pad plus. If you want to select less, you can do control and number pad, pad minus. Um, and basically all that does is what you might think. We've got uh, all these faces selected here. And if I do control plus, 
it selects some more. I do control plus again and it selects some more. And plus again, and plus again. Now you gotta be careful with this because it's going to start snaking around your model. But this is a nice way of kind of doing some selecting without getting too tedious. So we can go over here and you can see that if we zoom in here, our soul, we've got another uh, a couple of faces here to go up. And then uh, same thing over here. So we're going to do that. We're going to go up one and then up two. And you can see here that our soul is nicely selected except for this area right here and right here. Again, don't worry about this. I'll explain what this is, this gray part's kind of sticking through uh, in, in a little bit. But for right now, let's get these boots selected. So now comes the tedious part, and we have to just go and manually select these things. You can see that we're going to zoom way in here because we want to get a nice straight line here. We're going to be here and here and here. And again, not to beat a dead horse, but when you're working with a non-Eldritch Foundry model, this is how every aspect of the model has to be selected. There's no control Ling. You can do control plus, control select more and select less. That you still can do, but there's no control L for selecting link. And that is very, very troublesome. And again, this gray that's coming through here, don't worry about that. I'll, again, I'll explain that in a minute. All right, so that looks pretty good right there. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna, oh, looks like we missed one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and assign this right away. And then when we do the other one, we'll do, uh, we'll just assign to the existing material. So we're gonna create a slot, create a material. These are nodes. And for this, I just want plain black soles and assign. And so now our boots look much nicer than they did. So I'm going to do uh, Control-7 to look at the bottom. And I'm going to do the same technique again over on this one. When you do something like this, you do this initial selection. You want to be as even as possible because when you do your control plus to select more, it's going to benefit you to have things as even as you can. And you can always zoom away in here and you can see to see exactly what's going on. Okay, now I'm going to control plus. Again, just like before, we've kind of got to watch our we don't want to control plus all the way too high here and get into our upper. So we're going to do one more. Boink. Okay, so we've got a nice good line here, just like over on the other side. Oh, it looks like we were one short on the front here. That's okay. We'll fix that up. And again, this is kind of where things can get a little tedious. But again, for purposes of demonstration,
And again, you can see the controls as I'm zooming and panning and rotating, getting familiar with your mouse controls. Again, out of select mode, so I'm holding down shift, center button to pan over or rotate, which is just center mouse button, or zoom in and out, which is the mouse wheel. Those are the three real important uh, um, movements that you're going to be doing. Zoom out a little. Just going to roll around, pan over, rotate a little bit more, zoom in a little bit. And getting familiar with those really is where it is with regard to painting. Um, the more familiar you are, the quicker and easier you can move around the model like you see me doing here. The quicker you're going to be painting and the better your results are going to be. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of do a rotate around here. Again, don't worry about this uh, crud down here. Um, and then we already have the material for the sole of the boot. Um, done so we've got some stuff selected here make sure this is selected and we just do a sign and we can deselect now if we reselect the boot sole we're going to get them both so it adds to that so it makes it very handy so what we have here and I'm going to save this is really the bottom half of our figure is all painted and ready to go. Remember back when we started, we were in object mode. If you want to get a little bit better idea what your figure is going to look like without this mesh over the top, uh, we can go into object mode here. And again, you can kind of see, gives you a little bit better color uh, idea what the color is going to look like. And again, these things look different uh, when you get imported into McCray's Keep, but again, all that can be adjusted. Again, we can re-enable our stage here if we want to and get a better idea of uh, you can see that he's sunken into the stage a little bit here um, and painting the sole of his boot would have been a big uh, a lot bigger pain in the butt uh, had we not separated out the stage and then hidden it this allows us to get at the bottom of the boot um, and, uh, and and paint it uh, much easier still tedious um, but much easier than it was. So we can go back into edit mode here. And the process would continue. And we'll continue this with the second part of this video um, where we will finish up painting him and also discuss some of the other um, uh, uh, aspects of the model that we want to clean up. Specifically, uh, and I'm going to give you a little preview here on what this is. This is really his foot. Uh, the skin on his foot that's coming through uh, the bottom of the boot. Um, when these models are made, um, they start with an actual uh, naked body. Um, and I'll show you that here. If we go and we want to select his skin, uh, and then what, I, what, what I, my point was is they start with a, basically a naked body of the figure that you choose. And these boots actually go over the leg and the foot. And um, the way the boots are shaped for the different styles and different things like that, um, sometimes uh, they don't quite fit. And then you get a little of this. Now, that that's nothing. That's no fault in the model or anything. When you do an actual 3D print of one of these figures, uh, that makes no difference whatsoever. We're using these figures in a slightly different uh, uh, way than, than they're really intended. An STL file is basically uh, is a very basic 3D mesh that's used for, for 3D printing. Um, what we're doing is uh, a little bit more involved. So um, uh, some of these things we happen to notice, and you can see here, just like uh, with uh, the sole of his boot, you can see that as I zoom out, there's uh, some of this, what I like to call burn through here. This again is his skin coming through the shirt and the armor just because of the way it fits. You zoom in a little bit and you don't see it, uh, but, but I do like to take care of that. So what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you this before we end this video here, just so you have some idea of what that is. is I'm gonna select a uh, part of his finger here and I'm gonna do Control L. And you can see that his arm lit up here, his face lit up, 
Um, if you look down here, his feet have lit up, and uh, uh, you can see through his pants here. Um, I'm going to show you another feature of Blender. Again, you can see it's bleeding through here and uh, bleeding through the back of his shirt and even through his helmet. His head's just a little bigger than that helmet uh, from a modeling standpoint. Um, one of the very handy things um, with regard to Blender and seeing things in your model, right now we're in uh, what they call uh, viewport shading. So uh, we see the surface of the model um, and we don't see through it. We don't see anything on the inside. We're seeing this, these elements of skin because they're either exposed or in this case, like I said, they're pushing through uh, the clothes. If we want to go and wa see this in a wireframe, we're going to get a much different look at this. And this now you can see the actual humanoid figure inside the boots, inside the helmet. You can see how his head is in there. And you can see inside, you can even see his toes. All of that is actually there. And that's actually pretty cool. Um, we could, for instance, in Blender, uh, take the boots off of him. And, uh, and I'll show you how this would work. So if we wanted to uh, select our boots and select the tongue, select the straps, select the rivets, um, oh, well, hold on a second, I did that wrong. Let's select none. Get rid of the skin selection. So we're going to select our select our boots, all the parts of our boots. Now, if we did the same thing that we did with the stage, where we go to the mesh, I'm going to save this. Oh. Again, I clicked and deselected everything, so I'm going to control Z, so I don't have to reselect all that. I'm going to save this, because we're going to do just a little experiment here. But if I went to the mesh menu and did separate by selection, and then I hid the boots, there, we see his legs and his feet in their full glory. We could actually paint these if we wanted to, um, but we're not going to do that. So I will show you. I'm going to just control Z back out of this. And I'm going to select none. But you can see that all that skin is there, the whole model. But the, the good news is... We don't need all that stuff. We don't need to, his feet don't really need to be in the boot. All that is is making the file size a little bit bigger because we have the extra mesh. Anytime that you see a face uh, in, in the mesh, um, that is, uh, that's file size. So we want to get rid of as many faces as we can. Um, so if I select all of his skin, you can see that only we only his fingers are showing. We got a little bit of his arm here and here where his shirt and gloves meet up. Fingers over here and and his face and his neck. Otherwise, we don't need any of that skin. And we can do some pretty cool things. And uh, we're going to uh, in the next video. And I'll show you how to basically get rid of all of the skin, all the parts of the model that aren't showing. That does two things for us. It keeps our file size low, which is great because all these figures have to be loaded in at some point um, to the website. And whether it's the upload or loading into a scene each time you go into it, for all your players uh, and everybody who's, who's involved in the scene, they have to wait for that model. So the smaller the file size of the model is, the better. So anything in this model that we don't need, uh, we're going to get rid of. And there's a real easy way of doing that, and I will show you uh, exactly how to do that in the, in the next video. And then we will finish uh, painting uh, the rest of this figure, and we'll go from there. But for now, um, this should give you a really good uh, first impression or first example of, one, setting up Blender for your first time use, two, getting an Eldritch Foundry uh, STL model imported, and ready for painting, 
and then three, uh, starting the painting process. Uh, and again, all these different things, uh, all these surfaces, it all works just just the same as the uh, elements of the model uh, that we already painted. So in the next video, we will start by cleaning up the skin and the parts of the model that are just not visible and no one will ever see. Uh, and then we will finish painting the rest of his, uh, his armor uh, and his helmet and his gloves and, uh, and the, the rest of it, his, his weapon and his shield, and uh, we will get him ready to go. So thanks a lot for watching uh, and stay tuned for the next video.